Praise God. Welcome to another segment of the House of Prayer online ministry. My name is Pastor Harris. We thank God for Apostle John Williams out of Fuglerville, Texas. We give honor to God who is our life, who is our strength, who is our everything. In him we live, move, and have our being. We can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Let us pray. Righteous God, our Father, we thank you and we praise you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. We come here for no shape, form, or fashion, solely to lift up the name of Jesus, building up your kingdom, God. Strengthen us as we go into another level. Leading, guide us, Lord Jesus. Order our steps. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for our mindset, the hunger and thirst for the word of God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all of the listeners out here into the universe. Lord, bless them, guide them, God. Give them a Chicana glory to let them know that you are God and above you there is no other. I thank you and I praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Our book will be coming from today, we'll be reading is Psalms chapter 7, verse 2 through 4. Our topic. Hold on. God has a plan and purpose for your life. Hold on. God has a plan and purpose for your life. Let us read Psalms chapter seven, verse, no, Psalms chapter six. I'm sorry, Psalm chapter six, verse two through four. Thank you, Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me. For my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. Deliver me and save me for thy mercy's sake. I thank God and I praise God for that. I was meditating on the word of God today. And God began to move inside my spirit. And I said, Lord, what is it? God said, hold on, sister. I began to stop and look around. I said, okay, God, I'm listening. He said, I have a plan and purpose for your life. Don't allow distractions and dismays to come in and throw you off the track. Don't allow your fleshly desires and feeling sad for yourself to throw you off the track. No weapon formed against you shall prosper as long as you obey me and follow my footsteps. You'll make it. I said, God, where would you want me to read? God said, took me right into Psalms chapter six. I started, Lord, have mercy on me because I have been thinking about other things, doing other things, allowing people and, and objects and life's challenges to come in and distract me from doing what God has for me. You know, God has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. Sure, life's challenges are going to come, but they come to make us stronger. They come to make us better, not bitter. They come to build up our character. So when we go out into the world, we begin to tell the people of the world about a God that we're serving, a God that can deliver, a God can heal, a God can save. How can you tell me that God is a healer if you've never been healed from drugs? How can you tell me that God is a deliverer if you yourself have never drank? And I need to be delivered from drinking. I need to be delivered from suicide. I need to be delivered from fornication. I need to be delivered from masturbation. I need to be delivered from adultery. I need to be delivered from my selfish desires. How can you tell me about God as a healer if you yourself have never gone through anything? If you've never struggled and had challenges in life? How can you tell me about it? God has a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. And as we go through, there's a next level. There's a next level. There's a next level. Fret not. If you lost your job, you know, if your wife and you aren't getting along right now, you say, I've been saved all the time. I've been doing everything, Lord. I'm doing everything you want me to do. God said, this is another level I want to take you to. So I want you to wait on me as I deliver you out the marital situation that you're in. I'm going to heal and I'm going to deliver her. I'm going to heal. I'm going to deliver him. They going to be saved in Jesus name. But I need you to wait. I don't need you to mess it up trying to correct her. You're saved. You're delivered. God gave you the Holy Ghost for you, not him, not your wife, not your husband. That's for you. You lost your job. Lord, I'm going to church. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. But now I'm unemployed. God said, hold on. There's another level that I want to take you to. I want you to keep the faith. Hold on. There's another level that you've got to go to. I want you to trust me. So when somebody else comes to you and they say, you know what? I lost my job. You can say, hold on. Wait a minute. Let me tell you. God is a healer and a deliverer. He'll deliver you out of that situation of unemployment. 
He'll deliver you out of that situation of depression while you're unemployed. He'll deliver you out of that situation of oppression while you're going through. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Hold on. It's time for us to move into the next level. How can you go into the next level unless you go through the valley? How can you move up when you're trying to put your size eight in a size five? You've outgrown those shoes. It's time for you to pass them on to somebody else or throw them in the garbage because God wants to move you to another level. Don't say stagnant in your praise. Don't say stagnant in your worship. It's another level of praise and worship that God wants us to take each and every one of us to. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Strengthen me where I am weak. Build me up, God, in your word. O Lord, I need you like never before. Begin to talk to our Father while I wait on you, God. Give me directions for my next assignment. Fill me daily with your love and power and the Holy Ghost so that I can endure hardness as a good soldier. God, I need you, Lord, like never before. I understand that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Talk to God. Let him know. I understand that the battle is already won. God, but I need you to teach me. I need you to show me. I need you to... Let me know that I, how to hold on to you. There's a way of holding on to God, and it's by getting into the word of God. Every day we should feed on the word of God. This is where our strength comes from. This is how we're able to endure. This is how we're able to minister and show others about God in his word. Everything you're going through in life, every obstacle you're going through, every challenge you're going through is in the word of God. There is nothing that we are doing on this face of the earth that God hasn't already delivered somebody out of his word with. Nothing. Everything you're going through, every challenge, you can open up the word of God. Seek God. He'll give you a scripture for it to help you through that day. To teach you how to live a holy life. To teach you how to live a saved life. To teach you how to glorify him when you're going through. To teach you how to worship him in spirit and truth. So when people see you, they will not know that. There's havoc going on at your house. They'll be able to look at you and say, wow, this she ain't going through nothing. He ain't going through nothing. But little do they know you're holding on to God's unchanging hand. Little do they know that you're holding on to the power and prayers of the righteous. You know, somebody out there is praying for you. So all you need to do now is pray and mm. into the atmosphere. Pray into the atmosphere. Pray into the atmosphere. God hears you. He already know what you need. He's just waiting on you to lift up your hands and say, God, I surrender. God, I can't take care of this situation. I don't know what to do, Lord. I'm weak, God. I need you to build me up. Lord, I've tried in my way and it's not working. And I know that there's no other way but your way. Lord, forgive me for my sins, for thinking that I had it under control. Lord, forgive me for my sins, for thinking that I got this together. Th forgive me for my sins, for getting prideful. Forgive me for my sins, God. I'm going back to you. The greatest place to be is at the foot of Jesus. At the foot of Jesus, looking up to him with our arms stretched out, giving him a sign of surrender. Let him know that we need you, God. We're here, God. We're servants, God. We want to know how can we get into the next level, God. And we can only know that when you show us. God has a plan and purpose for your life. You are not here on earth by mistake. You are Your parents were gave birth to you. When your mother was pregnant with you, God had a plan and purpose for your life in it. You didn't just was born and say, God got a plan and purpose. No, God had a plan and purpose when you was in your mother's womb. God has plan and purpose. And it's time for us to move into the next level of our lives. You are right where God wants you to be. I'm right where God wants me to be. It's not about my will. It's about God's will being done. Begin to thank him and praise him daily. I said, thank you, God, for the ministry. Thank you, God, for the abundance and the overflow. Thank you, God, for my loved ones being saved. Thank you, God, for my mind being stayed on you, God. Thank you, God, for surrounding our hearts with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God, for allowing the Holy Ghost to rest, room, reign, and abide in us. Thank you, God, for ordering our steps. Lord, we know no weapon formed against us shall prosper, but we thank you and we praise you, God, because we can't do it without you. God, we cannot do it without you. Forgive us for our sins. When you put your foot on that ground in the morning, you open up your eyes. When you open up your eyes, you should just lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for my family, God. Thank you for my family, God. Begin to give him praise. So you ain't got no job. So you and your wife, she don't want to speak to you. But you thank him because you got a wife. Somebody ain't got a wife and want a husband. Somebody ain't got a wife and want a wife. 
Somebody has never been married and praying that God bless them and deliver them with a, a, a mate. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to worship. Begin to minister. Let God know, Lord, I'm trusting you for every word that I read in this Bible. You read and you, you daily on the word. Tell God, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I don't see no way out of this situation, but I know you have a way out. Lord, you are a mind fixer. You're a heart regulator and you're a way out of no way. And I thank you and I praise you and I'm going to worship you. And I thank you for strengthening my faith in you, God. And once you've delivered and healed me out of that situation, you've taken me to that next level. I'm going to go out and I'm going to tell the world about a great God who can do anything but fail. I thank you, God. God has an angel for each one of us. And the angels guide us. The angels watch over us. If you allow your angel to move instead of you trying to move in front of them, let God lead and guide you. Let your angel that's watching over you because he sees what's to come. God sees what's to come. That's why he allowed angels to watch over us. Be mindful, brothers and sisters, of how we talk to one another. There's power in your words. You don't want to talk yourself out of the plan and purpose that God has for your life. The level that he wants to move you to because he showed you something. And instead of you praying, you out there running your mouth and talking about it, telling everybody God's going to do this. 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 If you're going to do that, find somebody with faith. So when you say God, they could say, you know what? I'm praying with you. I'm touching and agreeing with you. Not someone that when you say God's going to do this and after you leave, they go get on the phone. Yeah, you know, such as call me, tell my God's going to do this. Yeah, OK. All right. Mm -hmm. That person has no faith. Oh, you have little faith. And if they have faith, it's selfish because they're obviously only thinking about the things that they want to do. Learn how to pray and touch and agree with one another. Learn how to pray and touch and agree when somebody tells you God's going to do something for them. Don't pray on them and be negative and speak against the blessings. Build them up. Encourage them. I'm praying with you, brothers and sisters. I'm praying with you. God has a plan and purpose for your life. God wants to move you to the next level. In order for you to go through the next level, in order for you to go to that next level, God's got to move you out of where you at and you, you've gotten comfortable there. And so now he's twisting and turning. He's trying to move you and you're trying to pull back and stay where you are. God has a plan and purpose for your life. Lift up your hands and tell him not as I will, but thine will be done. Yes to the way, your Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Yes, Lord. Where you have for me to go? Yes, Lord. Wherever you take me, Lord, I'm going to go and I'm going to worship you in spirit and truth. Yes. Say yes to God. Because if you're feeling uncomfortable, that's just your flesh. You don't want to move and God want to move you. So you're pulling back. Your spirit and flesh are in a war. God's spirit is saying, come on, come on. But your flesh is saying, Lord, I don't want to. That's a place I've never been. I don't understand that. I'm uncomfortable there. I can tell you I'm a living witness. I got so used to over the years of my husband praying for us, praying for the house, praying for the house, praying for the house. And so when God called him home, and now I'm a widow woman. I said, Lord, forgive me. I got comfortable. Show me how to pray over my house. Show me how to pray over our sons. Show me how to pray over our daughters. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for being caught up and being relaxed. No, uh, -uh. God said, no, I don't want you relaxed. I'm pulling the crutch from underneath you. You got to move. It's time for you to allow that ministry that I placed inside of you to be birthed forward. I began to repent. I got on my knees and I repented and asked God to forgive me for being selfish. Forgive me for taking my husband for granted if I did in any way. And I began to thank God and praise God for him, for the blessed man that he allowed me to be with for 16 years. God says it's time for you now to grow. It's time for you now as that widow woman to worship me in spirit and truth. It's time for you to go higher. Not go back, go higher in me. Every challenge that comes in your life it's to make you better. It's a time and a place for you to grow. It's a time and a place for you not to question God. Not for you to think about why you're here, what you're doing. Here. No, it's a time for you to say, God, here am I. Where do you want me to do now? What should I do now, God? Whether shall I go now, God? Whom shall I minister to? God, lead and guide me. For the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Hold on. God has a plan and purpose for your life.
Understand that the blood of Jesus prevails against distractions and dismays. They're going to come to try to throw you off your obstacle. They're going to come to try to throw you from that next level. But plead the blood of Jesus over them and know that God is able to take you through and take you higher in him. If you trust him and lean not to your own understanding, God has a plan and purpose for your life. And he wants to move you to that next level. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. Let him know I'm weak and my soul is sorely vexed, God. I need you like never before. God bless you. My name is Pastor Patricia Harris. I am coming out of Michigan. God bless. God bless. God bless. I hope and pray I've said something that can help you on your journey of life.